Well, Arizona has a longer history as part of Spain than it does as part of the United States. The name Arizona is thought to be a blend of Spanish and a local tribal language meaning small spring. Arizona spent 300 years as part of Spain beginning in 1521. Then, in 1821, when Mexico won its independence from Spain, Arizona began its short history as part of the independent country of Mexico. The United States seized all of the most valuable parts of Mexico, including California, as our prize for winning the Mexican-American War in 1848. As an American territory, Arizona chose the wrong side of the Civil War and fought to keep enslaved people in the United States enslaved. Toward the end of the Civil War, President Lincoln appointed a 54-year-old New Yorker, William Thompson Howell, as a federal judge to serve in the Arizona Territory, where he then wrote the first laws of Arizona to be written without Spanish or Mexican influence. Those laws became known as the Howell Code. One of the laws in the Howell Code written in 1864 says, a person who provides supplies or administers to a pregnant woman or procures such woman to take any medicine, drugs, or substance, or uses or employs any instrument or other means, whatever, with intent thereby to procure the miscarriage of such woman, unless it is necessary to save her life, shall be punished by imprisonment in the state prison for not less than two years, nor more than five years. Arizona was the last of the 48 contiguous states to become a state. 48 years after William Thompson Howell wrote the abortion law of the territory, which was never rewritten by the new state of Arizona, and so remained the law of Arizona until Roe versus Wade was decided in 1973. And now, thanks to Donald Trump, the Howell Code is officially the law on abortion once again in Arizona after the Arizona State Supreme Court today ruled that the 160-year-old law is now back in force, in full force, after Donald Trump's appointees on the United States Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade. Donald Trump said yesterday that this is exactly what he's always wanted. Donald Trump said that each state should determine abortion law of that state. And whatever they decide must be the law of the land, in this case, the law of the state. The law of the state. And in this case, the law written by one man 54 years before women had the right to vote. Five years in prison. Donald Trump supports five years in prison for anyone in Arizona who participates in any way in an abortion. No one in Arizona has voted for that law, but a majority of the people of Arizona have voted for a governor who opposes that law, a governor to the horror of William Thompson Howell, is a woman who will be our first guest tonight. It is a dark day in Arizona. Just now, the Arizona Supreme Court issued its opinion in Planned Parenthood v. Mays, upholding one of the most extreme abortion bans in the country. To the people across Arizona who are concerned about the future of abortion rights in our state, who are worried about their bodily autonomy, who don't want to see the freedom of their wives, sisters, and daughters restricted, you can make your concerns known at the ballot box, and I encourage you to do so. Governor Kitty Hobbs ran against Republican Carrie Lake, who fully supported an abortion ban in that campaign. Carrie Lake is now running for Senate in Arizona against Democrat Ruben Gallego, who will also be joining us tonight. And today, Carrie Lake, like other Republicans, flip-flopped on the issue 
And Carrie Lake is suddenly saying something very different about abortion, which we'll hear about when Congressman Gallego joins our discussion. Immediately after the Arizona Supreme Court's decision came down, the Vice President of the United States said this. Today, the Arizona Supreme Court issued a ruling that creates a near total abortion ban in the state of Arizona, a ban with no exceptions for rape and incest, a ban that will apply to women before they even know they are pregnant, and threatens prison time for nurses and doctors. Understand, to stop bans like this, we need a United States Congress that will restore the protections of Roe v. Wade. And when they do, President Joe Biden will sign it into law. Arizona's Attorney General, Democrat Chris Mays, said today she will not enforce the law written 160 years ago by a man who could never have imagined that a woman would be Arizona's Attorney General. Attorney General Mays said today's decision to reimpose a law from a time when Arizona wasn't a state the Civil War was raging, and women couldn't even vote, will go down in history as a stain on our state. I look forward to the people of Arizona having their say in the matter. And let me be completely clear, as long as I am Attorney General, no woman or doctor will be prosecuted under this draconian law in this state. Today, Arizona State Senator Eva Birch said this. Good morning. I am State Senator Eva Birch. A couple weeks ago, I had an abortion, a safe, legal abortion here in Arizona for a pregnancy that I very much wanted, a pregnancy that failed, like many of my pregnancies before it, an embryo that was dying, and a miscarriage that was destined to happen Somebody took care of me. Somebody gave me a procedure so that I wouldn't have to experience another miscarriage, the pain, the mess, the discomfort. And now we're talking about whether or not we should put that doctor in jail. This is outrageous that we would even dignify the consideration of this type of ban a ban drafted when women had no say, when Arizona was not a state. This isn't what the people of Arizona or the people of this country want. We're talking about a small number of really extreme political leaders calling the shots for everybody else. Republicans don't want this. Independents don't want this. Democrats don't want this. We have to look at who our elected leaders are. The time is now. It's done. I've had enough. The people of Arizona have had enough. We are electing pro-choice candidates in November. Watch it happen. That's all I have to say. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.